try to. I'm trying, but I'm like, oh, I'm like burning inside to say something too. Sorry. Do you see where you're able to save it to your phone? Yes, I saved it. I'll put it on YouTube. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I got it saved for you. Thanks. All right, all right, <laughs> all right, guys. Um, no, but they will. These people, as I was talking about, um, and again, if I if I didn't get to your questions, just go ahead and repeat them again, and I'll get to it. But uh, what I'm saying is, these people will boast about their works and not God. Always remember that they will not boast about God and give glory to God. You know, they will not glorify Him. You'll see it in their fruits. Um, they keep Shabbat, keep his holy days, things like that. Is it they're following his commandments out of these things? Is it out of love? And that's what we need to check. You know, do we have love for our brothers and sisters? And the most people that are legal, legalistically following some things and boasting about keeping these things, they're reading doctrine and theology and they're, they're boasting upon their pride and knowledge of what they're reading, just like in Galatians. Um, but a lot of these people aren't actually out there doing God's work. Okay, the same thing with the, the people that speak all grace, that say the law is done away with. These people are out there, you know, just like the legalistic people that are not doing, you know, that are boasting about the law. They're not out there helping the people that need help. They're not walking in the law, being doers of the law, being, loving their neighbor and helping them. And you know, that's what I'm talking about. You know them by their fruits, and the people that don't that believe in all grace, uh, it's all grace. Yeah, sure, sure it is. That his is 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 grace by his grace. He's given us the spirit that deny all ungodliness, right? So he put his laws within us to help us to walk it out. But those who believe that the law is done away with, they aren't obeying God, and they ain't loving their neighbor either. Period. They ain't out there, no desire to feed the homeless and the sick. If they are, they're doing it. Hey, look at me. They're taking pictures and videos for everybody, the world to see. And they're, they're not doing it out of love. They're doing it out of pride. Hey, look at me. Look what I'm doing. Look, I'm about to start a church. I'm about to start a ministry. I, look at all these people coming. I'm going to take a video of everybody. Hey, everybody, look back here. You know, Come on. You see what I'm saying? You can claim that you have the Spirit. You can claim that you have the law you can claim you have grace but if you're being doers of it you're just deceiving yourself so um let me see telling the truth yes is also love and if we're gonna a lot of these pastors and rabbis out there today they're not speaking truth because they don't care for their sheep they care to feed their belly and it's not only the belly could be their hand for money, but it could also be their their acceptance, their popularity. It could be um, for their pride. Um, they might be boasting to show others, like, you know, uh, look, look, mom, look what I'm doing. Look how many followers I got. They may go show other people. Look how many people I got. Look how many people follow my ministry. Look, now I'm on TV. Look how many books I've sold. Look at this. And, you know, and they're going to compare themselves to other people, like the apostles and other prophets. Like, they'll compare themselves to these people saying, coveting. They'll covet. They'll say, oh, I'm like Paul, you know. They'll take pride. People told me I'm like Paul. And people told me, you know, I'm like, I'm like Jeremiah. Or I'm Elijah. Come on. No, you're like God. Try to be like God. Don't compare yourself to others. You know, God never compares himself to others, and he's never going to give somebody a vision that's to tell them, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare you to this man over here. No, he's going to compare him, you to the ways of your sin, your deeds, your, your walk, your righteousness. He's going to compare you to yourself. Worry about yourself, not that the words of others. It's what I'm trying to say. Judge righteous judgment, not... You see, I, I hope I'm making sense here. Um, would, would you mind um, grabbing me that charger? My, everything might turn off, but my phone's going to... Well, it has a little bit of charge, but yes. I don't think there's an extension cord except that one over there. All right, guys. Um, thank you. Um... Let me see. 
means, okay, because I come from a protestant background and they're, they've been taught me that keeping, oh yeah. Um, do, do blow, uh, Christus, um, I hope I was just explaining this to everyone, um, about work salvation and what is, um, would you, um, mind plugging that into? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, work salvation and what is, uh, of the spirit. Um, it's not work salvation, um, is what I'm trying to say, but it's of the spirit. Um, it's by God's grace. But we are not to let his grace be give freedom to the flesh. If we give let his grace be freedom to the flesh, we're no longer walking in the spirit. And therefore, he says the ways, if you go far, further and read further into it, Galatians, he's even teaching the fruits of the spirits and the fruits of the flesh, okay? And the fruits of the flesh does what's contrary to the law of God, okay? So it's drunkenness, lic licentiousness. It's, uh, it's, um, it's uh, adultery, covetousness, slandering, uh, you know, fighting, feuding, things like that. Um, all those things are things of the flesh. That's why this, the, God's grace is not a, a freedom to of sin. It's freedom to be free from sin. It's, so the law within us, he put it on his heart. heart it's gentleness. It's loving. It's courteous. It's kind. It's gentle. You, you see, it's, it, it, it loves and those who are make the law and the legalism cannot love their neighbor. They're not doing being doers of the law. They can't not love God either. They're doing it out of legal legalistic heart, um, and, and like I said, out of pride. And it's not out of grace. Um, grace has taught us to deny all ungodliness and live upright and self controlled lives in this present age. And that's what Titus says. Um, but he, I keep repeating that. But he's also said that right there in Galatians five. Um, so I hope that explains. And if you want, you can go back and check these videos. I'm going to put each one on YouTube. Of course, it'll take a while to get up there, but um, work in silence. He will elevate you in due time. Yes, that's it. Work in silence. And he'll, if you, if you're doing the works to parade yourself around, you already have your praise on earth. That's it. You're going to be surprised how many people are actually have more riches and rewards in heaven and are, you know, are, and who are called great rather than least. You might see all these people having thousands and millions of followers, but they're going to be called the least. And you'll be surprised how some people will even get dethroned where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth and how many people will be locked outside the gates of Jerusalem. And it's a scary thought, but we have to make sure. And it's, that's why God gives us up to him. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. Didn't I do prophecy in your name? Didn't I heal in your name, cast out demons in your names? Well, if you didn't care to know him, how are you going to have a relationship with him? He's, he, we don't know where we're coming, but we know we're becoming like him. So when he appears on earth, we will know him for who he is. Before we will be like him. That's why he's, we're growing in sanctification until we receive our glorified bodies. It's by grace he has come upon us and given us his Holy Spirit, okay, and forgiven us of our sins in order to give us a power to walk in his ways. He put his laws in us, something that we could never have without him dying for our sins. Okay, so now we have direct access to the Holy of Holies through Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, and to God by his sacrifice alone. So... But we must grow in sanctification and continue in endurance until the end. Those who endure until the end shall be saved. They will be saved. And those who do his will, that's why it says in um, Revelation, it's, it, it calls for the endurance of the saints. Those who keep the commandments of God and, the, and have the faith in Yeshua, Jesus. It's, um, those are going to enter in the kingdom of heaven. Um, everybody else, they went after the false seeds, the bad seeds. Like I said, Revelation 18, that is the Antichrist spirit. The Antichrist spirit is anything contrary to the word of God, that anything that lusts after what the eyes can see, the hands can touch. And I hope people can understand I'm saying that all the time. I'm repeating it. 
Because anything can become an idol. Anything that goes above God's word, it goes after the love of God, it goes above him, will become an idol. It can be sports, it can be your family, it can be a, you know, your work, it can be your money, it can be your savings account, it can be your investments, it can be anything. It can be your, your acceptance, wanting acceptance from others, popularity, pride. It can be your car, your house. Anything can be an idol. But you have to be careful that you're not desiring those things. Yes, there will be false signs and wonders, and we must test the spirit. Ah, <laughs> yes, there we go. All right. Um, many people are being deceived right now by the false signs and wonders. And even the, the things going on, it's just like I'm going to give an example right now. The, uh, all the green lights going on in, in New York City, all the flashing and thunderous lights, and everybody was like, oh, it's aliens, right? Everybody's talking about it. Then people, then you'll see something that happens in Israel. Then you have all these people saying, what does this mean? What do you, there's just somebody sent a rocket that doesn't mean anything, okay? So people are being amazed by the signs and wonders that's going on. They'll see something, people filming something in the sky, these YouTube videos, they'll film in things, and they're even see things that, they're, they're being amazed by the signs and wonders, even what Revelations is warning of. They'll perform signs and wonders, and even the people, even the people, they will appear to be godly, looking like they're casting out, or healing people and casting out demons. These, that's why he says, then I do this in your name, but be, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. It's just, it goes beyond just no, having a personal relationship. It even goes beyond some of these people that are lusting after the things of Babylon. It's the spirits of Babylon that filled them and not the spirit of God. Because they gave way, not to the law of God, but the freedom of the, of the, from, of the law, but up to the flesh. They gave way to it, and then they went after the ways of the flesh and started idolizing and that's why paul warns over and over again not to, to have any idols he warns of idolatry over and over again the thing is if you're idolizing a man you're idolizing a religion you're idolizing certain peoples and groups even anything in this world your your heart can go to the, uh, go, go over to that person and those things and you're no longer following after the the the, the seed of god be careful that we work to get you you know you're the fruits of god's people but you, you lust only after God's word because it's not where people start, but it's where people end. And I'm not saying just even listen to me. And I'm going to say that. Everybody else may say to listen to them, listen to them. I, they have the word. They have the answers. I tell you, the word is right here. The answers are right here. This is the only truth. And I might be speaking, to, whether it might be convicting some things you might agree with or don't, whether by the flesh or the spirit, it's, 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 I'm just putting it out there. Um, and again, um, another thing, something else that just came to me. People are, are following after these people that are claiming to be prophets. They're claiming to have the word. That's what he said. Many will come in my name and claim themselves to be Christ. They'll claim to know him. Okay? And these people are claiming to know him and speak in these things, but it's not, they're not, it's a twisted message. But it's going to reach the people that don't know the, that the, the sheep don't know the shepherd's voice. They don't know the shepherd's voice and they're not going to come when he's calling. But they're going to go to the false shepherds that, that are separating the sheep and, and the goats. The goats are going after the ways of the false shepherds and are going after tons of shepherds. And they're false shepherds. But the good shepherd, there's only one, and that's Yeshua Jesus. And he calls his sheep and they know his voice. That's why people are coming. And in, in, in the, you want prophecy. Read. Who is speaking obedience? Who is speaking righteousness and repentance and the love of God? Who is speaking in the correct ways? Those. What anything that is hidden in darkness will be brought to light. Not that anything that is done in secret will be brought to fruition. You'll know it will be brought to light, and there will not be one thing that will be hidden. In the end days, and people will have the knowledge of the end days. Keep this book sealed in Daniel until the end days. And what does that mean? The knowledge of God's word. Most people say, oh, the false prophets, I'm going to tell you, this is what the false prophets use. They say, well, no, that's the knowledge of, uh, we gone to the moon. That's the knowledge because we have phones and we have, now we have the internet and all this technology. That's a false prophet. I'm going to tell you. Those people are speaking a twisted message, a twisted grace, and they're going to speak against the law. I'm telling you because they don't have the, the spirit within them. And I'm warning you, these people right now, that, that, that because they're they're the ones 
their light is being revealed. They don't have the knowledge of the end times. Oh, it looks like they do, but what they're doing is showing you signs of wonders. And what they're showing you is YouTube videos that looks righteous, it looks holy, it looks good, it looks accurate, it looks biblical, it looks like end times. But what they're doing is, is you're going to listen to their message and take their seeds, swallow them, eat it, grow, and it's going to implant in your heart. It's going to grow, and boom, you're going to be the same person in Revelation 18 that are going to die in the, with the rest of the other people. I'm going to warn you, be, do not be deceived. Paul and Yeshua, Jesus warns it over and over and over and over and over again. Even in Old Testament, it warns it over and over. Don't go after the ways of the pagan nations, the false prophets. Don't listen to them. And even in the Old Testament, they're saying, you're gonna, you have grace. You have, we have grace to do these things. We have grace to commit lawlessness. We have grace. <laughs> what happened? Destruction. The land vomited them out. So, as I was speaking of earlier, the land vomited them out. Where, where you don't are walk, walk, walking in God's ways, enemies are going to come against your land. And they're going to fight against you. They're going to war against you. That's why there's always going to be war where there's unrighteousness. That's why natural disasters will always be where there's unrighteousness. There, we cannot, that's why people keep rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. <laughs> but we're not repenting. You want, to, you want to make your life great, then it comes to repentance. It's not just saying, I, you know, I confess my sins and repent. Anybody can confess with their sins and repent, but it's who's the doers? Anybody can, can claim to be saved, but who's the doers? Who's the ones that actually have the seeds in their heart that want the, the righteousness of God? That want the, the, the righteousness, that wants his fruits. That wants the living waters, those who are desperate to be healed. He said, I'm not come to he, to to call the righteous but the sinners the sick those who think that they were already righteous that think they're already fine I've already made it I'm in the kingdom I'm, I have another thing coming to you you are growing in pride you're walking and treading on dangerous waters Walk, grow in humility not in pride the closer we get to God's heart we should be growing in more humility the further we get from God's heart the more we'll walk in pride. And pride is the worst seed of all. And it will bring up lots of sins along with it. Um, let me see what else I got here. I know it's getting late. Some people probably have to get up, work. Um, but... I don't think I'm finished. <laughs> um, I'm not finished until God tells me that's enough. Um, when it comes to salvation, and I'm going to tell you, not one of us can lead anybody to salvation. What it's going to do only by God's spirit and his grace alone can it convict somebody and strike their morals, their intellect. We can't have a, an enlightenment and, and, you know, we had a fuzzy feeling that we leave the church and a year later we go back to sin. It's not, it's not that. Being hit by the Holy Spirit, being convicted by the Holy Spirit, being changed and transformed, that's what the churches are lacking, these synagogues are lacking. You'll know when you, you are walking in salvation and when you've been hit with the Holy Spirit, you will have a transformation. You will have a lifestyle walking after God and a desiring after His ways. You won't have any longer a desire to still hold on to your riches and hold on to this world. You will only desire him and his ways. And I don't know how many are clear, cl clear terms to put that. Um, but the things that used to make sense, this is the only way I can put it. It's just it bottled up in, um, in my mind. But the only way I can put it is the things you used to lust after, the things that used to bring you happiness, the things you used to desire the things you thought brought you joy or happiness, the things that you used to spend your time doing, you no longer do because now a new lust has, has filled up your life and now you're feeling, wanting this. You desire to be time, have time alone with him and enjoy your family along with time alone with God, you know, together as a family. And um, I'm not just saying that your media family, but your, your Christian believers, uh, messianic believers, you guys, um, together that we desire, you know, <laughs> to build each other up. Um, do you all have any more questions? Opinion? Uh,
Yes. Um, and that's why we're told to stay sober, not only physically, but spiritually. Um, um, about keeping our minds clear um, from with pure conscience and not to uh, have mind altering substances. Um, that's yes, because it can take us from God and we it can, it can lead us to astray to other things, um, other seeds. It lets our guards down as the same way we watch an inappropriate movie. It starts, we become in, um, or a violent movie, those things start letting down our senses, our guard, and what can happen? The weeds can come in. If we're not careful to guard our our yard, and, uh, you know, this enemy can plant seeds, and it can suddenly start to grow, and next thing you know, we're basking in sin and idolatry, or, or it hardens our heart, which we don't even realize what we're walking in. Yes. Um, John Darby, the the... The idea of the rapture came from John Darby. Um, I forgot his name earlier. Um, had a mind bl blank, but that theology was to fill the churches, uh, the pre-trib rapture, um, and it was built, expounded upon by Tim LaHaye. Um, it's, it's uh, it, when they couldn't sell it over in Europe, where do they come? The land of the free, the land of the brave, uh, America. <laughs> The one that loves riches and idolatry and what they do, put it in the college seminaries. They sold it and it was put in the uh, doctrinal books and theological books, um, commentaries. You're going to see a lot of things. A lot of things were implemented from um, that was really from the Antichrist spirit that was put in a lot of people's like even the ESV, for example, and NASB. There's a lot of books, the KJV, and if you look in the commentary, the footnotes, and if you don't know what footnotes are, I'm going to show you right here. Right here, those things at the bottom of a page. Those things at the bottom of a page, that's footnotes. Um, commentary are things um, that you get. It's people's interpretation and of, of the, the word or certain verses, and you'll see people, a lot of people uh, teach on those and talk on those. Those are also... Be careful of those people, I'm telling you, because a lot of them are false prophets. They're the ones that hate the law. They don't have the law written on their hearts. They don't have the spirit, so they're going to teach you a false grace. Um, and a lot of those things were sold. Uh, these doctrines and theolo theologies were also sold and, and put into theological seminaries and colleges, Bible colleges. And what does it do? It brainwashes people the same way a public school does. It's not real truth, but it's a, a false truth of history. So... The same way is what they're doing. It's invaded our religion, and that's why a lot of people are drunk off the cup of Babylon. They don't really aren't walking in the spirit. They're walking in the spirit of man, and the the seeds after man, and it's, it's the seeds of man's word, which is the oral law. Just like the Pharisees, that's what happened in Christianity. A lot of Christianity today, it was back in Judaism way back then, and that's why Yeshua Jesus said, "I come not to do do didn't, came not to do away with the law of the, or the prophets, but to fulfill it," which is, means completely. Teach it, complete it, um, accurately uh, expound upon it. It's basically, and that's one thing I'm going to get get there, go uh, build upon that right now because I feel some people may want to hear it. But when a rabbi, and that's why they knew it at this time, and Yeshua Jesus was a rabbi, he had 12 disciples. A lot of times they would have 12 students, Talmudim. And what they would do is if, if a rabbi was mit, incorrectly interpreting the law, they'd say, you're destroying it. So if you're destroying the law, that's why I said it not come to destroy incorrectly and t teach it, but to fulfill it, correctly teach it. You see, it's pleru. It's, that's what it was in Greek. And it's, uh, you know, complete, uh, fully teach it correctly and bring the fullness of the truth. So um, that's why he says any of you that teaches against, you know, what did he say? And I'm, I'm going to go here really quick. Um, Matthew. I, I don't want to slaughter this. I just want you to understand this. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Amen. And this is what I want to tell you. I tell you. 
Until heaven and earth pass away, not as smallest letter or yud stroke, which a yud is basically the smallest. Um, it's the Hebrew alphabet, smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Um, it's, but that's what it is, a stroke shall ever pass away from the Torah until these things have come to pass. Now, some people, I'm going to tell you, these people that read off a of doctrine theology, they're going to tell you, well, that was happened, having an earth passed away at the, the tearing of the veil. That's anti-Semitic. I'm going to tell you why. Because he's, if you read in Revelation at the end, he says, when I go and prepare you, and then after the thousand-year reign, it says, a new heaven is a new earth. So he says, he and, and then the sea will pass away, and, and just like he says, he'll cast our sins to the bottom of the sea, right? The sea will pass away, and all the sins with it, all the sinners, all the people with it, and it will be gone for all eternity, right? After the thousand-year reign of Yeshua um, on earth. And what, what, that, what that also means, he says, until heaven and earth pass away, not his smallest letter. That's why when he comes back, those who are waiting for him, patiently waiting for him and desiring him, they're going to see him. That's why it says, we don't know where we're, we become, where we're coming, but we know when, we, when he appears, we'll be just like him. That's why we're growing in sanctification. He's, he's sheep know his voice. He's calling them out right now. And um, the, until heaven and earth pass away, so that means the laws on our heart. We still struggle with sin and, 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 and righteousness, right? The spirit and the flesh. It's always warring against each other. That's what Paul is talking about in Romans. So we're walking, if we walk in the spirit, we have to put to death every single day the flesh. By walking in the spirit, desire the ways of the spirit and not the flesh. The flesh is going to always want what its eyes, what it can see and what it can touch. It's going to desire everything in this world, but make sure you only lust after the things of God by walking in the Spirit. Only have eyes for Him, a single eye, single eye for God. Um, that's why He says, "Shall ever pass away from the law, the Torah, until all these things come to pass." Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others the same shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever keeps and teaches them, this one shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is, is earth, is kingdom on earth, is a thousand year reign. And I want people to understand that. It's a thousand year reign. That's why people are trying to teach you, you know, the dead in Christ are going to rise, right? And then we're going to meet up with them. They're going to come to this earth and they're going to reign. Instantly we'll have glorified bodies, right? But then there's still going to be the unrighteous still living on this earth. And but people are still going to have children and married and wives and stuff like that. But they're still going to continue. But God is going to reign by His laws and regulations, His 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 ways, and teach us for a thousand years before we live with Him. You know, for all eternity. And I hope that makes sense and gives people a, a better understanding. It is, when you have the truth, you're going to endure. And faith comes from from hearing not just the parts of the word, and that's why a lot of people are falling back into sin. They're not hearing the truth of the word and accepting or living by it, but they're hearing a false word that has no power. That's why people have a re an image of godliness of religion, but deny its power. And what is that power? A power to deny all ungodliness in this present day and age and live upright and holy lives in this, you know, self-controlled lives. Um, for I tell you that Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and the Torah scholars, you shall never inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, and that's also something anti-Semitic they use, okay? You have heard it was said that those of old you shall not murder. And whoever commits murder shall be subject to judgment. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be subject to judgment. The Pharisees thought they were righteous, okay? But they're teaching oral man-made laws from the from a um, I forgot the school's name right now. There's two schools, Haleo, and there's another one. Um, um, but yes, they're teaching false doctrines, and there's as I said, there's 20 sectors within the Pharisaic movement. Um, just like there there's 40 in the Baptist movement in Christianity. You see, and everybody thought they were walking in the ways of God. That's another understanding. So you can see he came to properly teach it. And, um, but yeah, they, they made 
doctrines of what murder was, but he's actually telling them the correct way. That's why he says, those who um, you have heard, it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. See, in a lot of the, the you're going to see some things like in the, the Mishnah and the Talmud, there's things in there about, about this. It's interesting that you have writings of Yeshua, Jesus, and <laughs> I'm not telling you to go look after that, but um, the Mishnah was actually the closest um, teachings of that, that day of what Yeshua, the school that Paul was raised up in and what Yeshua was basically, the same teachings were from that in, in, in most essences. Um, but he was teaching this because it's like you, 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 uh, on, uh, you, you see what I'm saying. If you think you're righteous, but I don't commit adultery. But if you're lusting after a woman, you're lusting after women, picture and having sex and things like that, desiring, coveting, desiring to sleep in bed with that woman or that man or things like that. You lust after, after that man's body. That's, that's committing adultery. Okay. So that's something that. That's what he says. Have have a single eye, have a pure eye. If the light, if the whole one, the eye is full of darkness, then the whole body is full of darkness. If the eye is filled with light, whole body is filled with light. So, we. That's why you put the death, the flesh, and that's why he's he's basically saying as well. Don't just do the minimum. Go beyond. Don't just do the minimum of what it's, the word says, but the oral law, which is it's the law of God, but they have made it into a law. You know after man but he says if you lust after her in your with your heart you have committed adultery and so that's what i'm saying um he didn't make it easier he actually made it harder so that's why we need the power of the spirit that's why i can't properly teach it but um no i i i've i've written a book when i was really little um and I sold it to a teacher. I'm not, I don't write books. Um, I just don't feel biblically that's I, I, my own conviction. I don't feel that's right. Um, but um, at, I recommend the, I, I, somebody asked this earlier in, in the first um the first video, they I, I recommend the CJB, which is the Complete Jewish Bible, or the Tree of Life version, the TLV, which uh, most people would probably like that better. Um, that book is wonderful. I'm, it's the best translation, I feel. Um, and again, it's christianbook.com has it, uh, a book. Um, it's usually, usually runs, I think, about $15, U.S. dollars, so it's not that much. So... Um, but yeah, you'll you'll see a whole lot more in, in these books. Um, it's beautiful. But um, does anybody else have any questions? If you have any questions, I'm gonna see if there's any more questions up here. Um, please, if you have any more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But um, I don't see any more questions here. Opinions. Oh, again, um, Catholicism. <laughs> That's uh, my opinions on Catholicism. Um, it's a false, false religion. Um, uh, now I've met some very, very righteous men and women that are, are totally, they see the truth, but in Catholicism more than some Christians, but, um, it's very far and few in between. Um, there's so much doctrine and theology, a lot of Catholicism and, and pagan ways, um, practices and, and it especially depends on which uh, type of denomination or sector of Catholicism you want to talk about. Because uh, I know there's different types. And, um, but if you're talking about the kind with the Pope as well, um, there should be no intermediary, period. No intermediary. 
You're there. We have Yeshua as our intermediary. He's the direct access between God and, and us. Um, so we don't need a man to sit there and, and, and say we're forgiven of sins. And Yeshua only has the power to do that. We don't have people to tell us uh, what is right and what's wrong. Can't say, oh, you're forgiven of sins. Meanwhile, you, you're in the booth of uh, confession. Then you just go right back out and get plastered with alcohol. And then you come back the next week and you say, you know, I confess of my sins. That's not, and even Christianity has brought that in their own religion. I just confess with your mouth you're saved, you know, confess your sins, but there's no repentance. If you know what repentance is, you're going to go back to his word, his Torah, his the prophets. That's why he says, and not come to do away the law of the prophets, but you see to correctly fulfill them, to teach it, you know. And he's, if you read the prophets, you're going to see, you love his word, you're going to see his words being spoken, the word that became flesh. And you're going to see weeping, lamenting, mourning, fasting. You're going to see all these things render your hearts, not your garments. You know, it's um, set your heart, soul, and mind on God and not the things of the world, not your idols, not this, you know, it's, there's so many idols back then. And I could go into so much deep. So many people say, well, back then the, the Bible had nothing to do with what was today. Yes, it's more accurate today than ever before. It's just as accurate as it was back then. It's just a lot of people don't make it see it as relative today because they're not actually reading and the reason is people aren't being convicted by the old testament they're not being convicted by the prophets they're not seeing the cycle and how history repeats itself it's a it's a pattern all of this world is a pattern and it history repeats itself because we don't learn from it and the problem is when we keep trying to bury god's word we don't want to obey it we don't want to walk in it we don't want to know it the only way that we can have peace and that's why the false peace the false grace of love movement coexists it can't work as the torah says don't make a peace treaty with the foreign nations you can't do it we can't do it with islam we can't do it with the non-believers we can't you see what i'm saying it just won't work that's why it's called a false peace treaty and that's what's exactly what's about to happen again it's we're repeating it just in the time of daniel he says he'll set up his 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 uh his um kingdom between the sea and the temple Okay, which was the Temple Mount. And in the same sense, we, it's, we're we kind of repeating that same cycle. Um, the embassy and such like that, we're, we're kind of setting up the same cycle. Um, and it, we're expounding upon riches. It's a spirit. We're expounding upon riches and we're, we're bringing the nations together um, and offering them financial benefits. And we're, these people are getting rich. And even a lot of people are saying, we're rich, we don't need a thing, right? And a lot of Christians are saying that, just like in Revelation. Well, there, it even says the kingdoms will follow and lust after the things of what the whore of Babylon will offer. The whore of Babylon is a spirit, right? It, it's, it came, as I said, from Mesopotamia to the Assyrian kingdom to, to Babylon um, to uh, Egypt, all the way to Greece and Rome. It, and it came to America, came to the world. So it's here. And now there's one last kingdom that's being built. It's the universal kingdom. It was the Western Empire. Now it's literally the the universal, the, the global empire. And that's why we have the UN. The UN was part of that. Um, so it's 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 a dis deception. It's a it's a wicked spirit, and it's leading people to go after the lusts of their hearts and the idols of this world. Um, even the, the idols. The idols are no longer something out here so much as it is in our hearts. You can unknowingly be going uh, going after the idol of Baal and Ishtar and these other idols and not even know it, but you're actually, that spirit isn't within your heart. So that's why we have to be careful because these are the end days, the end days started at the time Yeshua Jesus resurrected from the dead. You know, that's what Satan tried to stop. And we are in these very last days and people aren't seeing it because they're still waiting Oh, you know, we're waiting for the temple to re be rebuilt. We're waiting for for um, this Antichrist to appear, not realizing that people are already walking in the Antichrist spirit. That's why he says, even way back here in Ezekiel, he says, put a, go throughout the, the city of Jerusalem, put a mark on the foreheads of those who are grieving and lamenting at, at their own sins and the sins of the, Israel, of the people. And it's those who have set themselves apart and repented. 
He has put a mark on them just like he put a seal in our in our mind, right? In our head. But it's interesting that in Revelation there's there's a mark and the the, the right hand was our our strength and our mind was our conscience, our our values, our character and our heart was what we desire, our desires, our passions. So all three things are connected together. So you see how it's spiritually a mark and it's so many people are waiting for a chip, not saying that there won't be, I don't know, you know, but we need to take it for what the word says and not be careful not to follow after some theological doctrine that could be false. You know, we know what the word says. And if the word even says in, in, in Ezekiel, and it gives us a warning in Revelation. So he says not to harm those with the, the, the mark on their forehead, the same re way that those in Revelation that have the seal of God, right, will not be harmed. That have an endurance, the faith in Yeshua, Jesus, and the commandments of God. And his, their law is written on their hearts, and it, it, it's, it's, it's a seal, right? So, but the, the, the mark of Satan will overcome the, the right hand, the strength, the, the characteristics, the morals, the values on the mind, and the desires of the hearts, the passions, the lusts. You know, where's the mark? Is it the mark of God or the mark of Satan? You know, what are you going after? Because this world right here, everything's going to be burnt down with, in all its riches. Everything's, you know, he's going to destroy this economic power everything that's uh, enslaved everybody, everything that people idolize and lusted after, the, the stock market is going to crash in a single day. You know, um, the, the trade will halt in a single day. Um, everything will be destroyed pretty much in a single day. And that's why people, their businessmen were weeping and mourning. They were crying. It wasn't even after God. It was after, it was after the riches. Um, they did, had no desire to obey God so um, or repent from their sins even then that's why even the people were hiding themselves in, in when the big huge hailstorms came down boulders people were hiding themselves in the crevices and the cliffs and the and caves and people were cursing God even right there even because it was destroying what they loved and that's in the same sense we're seeing that things right now the 2018 they says the most, one of the most costliest years of um natural disasters in all the world according to cb cnbc news or cbn you see but it's only going to get worse because the, the earth is moaning, it's groaning, and, and, and when there's sin, just like the land of Israel vomited them out, that's what the earth is doing right now. And eventually there's going to be war, there's going to be destruction, people are going to fight against each other. That's why there's so much division amongst people um, and, and fights. You're seeing clashes everywhere and rumors of wars. It's right here, guys. But you see, natural disasters are going to get worse. It's going to be in diverse places everywhere. We're seeing it everywhere. And it's becoming, the birth is coming. It's coming. It's about to give birth, and that's Yeshua, Jesus, coming back. And right now, that's why there's birthing pains. The earth is about to give birth, and it's about to vomit the people, just like the, 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 the Jews that kept getting exiled out of Israel for sinning and not turning from their sins. It's the same way America and all the other lands are about to get vomited out of the earth. It's just everybody that lusted after these things. It's, there's not going to be peace. There's not going to be love without the law of God and without the law of being written on our hearts. We can say we have grace. We can say we have, the, no, we follow the law, but without it being written on our hearts, there, you are walking in God, with God's ways. You don't know him. You're following after a false God and an antichrist spirit is what I'm trying to say. Um, I hope I explained that well. Um, let me see. Let me see. Start. Yeah, um, what area was most affected by? Um, Um, I don't know if I should answer that. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, talk about 
of my visions and stuff right now. It's just, it's not about myself right now. Um, I just I just want to keep things focused on God uh, if I can. Um, what depth? Oh, okay. It's about that thin. It's very. Well, of course, I have big hands, okay, but so that doesn't really help. Um, but, yeah, it's thin. It's probably about, what is that, an inch thick. But, I mean, the words words are pretty pretty simple to understand. So it's, it's very clear. Um, um, growing in faith. The word says that it's uh, faith comes from hearing, and um, and also a desire to obey. the The measure of our walk is is calculated on our obedience, and nobody can calculate that except you. So, um, you only know how close you are with God. You'll know whether you're feeling death in this world or if you're feeling life. Um, the de- the flesh should be feeling death. But the spirit should be feeling life. You should be separated. It's almost like a disconnect from both. Um, that's how you know you're walking in the spirit. But faith only comes from hearing God's word. That's why, you know, when, when people say, it, God, when, when doctrines of churches say, and religions try to say, oh, they're, they're speaking the truth, but, it's, but people are falling back to sin, there's a problem there. There's something people aren't hearing. And that's the truth. And faith helps us endure and faith by faith alone we're going to walk in god's ways and desire his ways and faith will help us endure until the end and keep us in his holiness um and that's that's why his grace came to give us that power to help us walk it out and walk in his ways but you know you'll know if you're not walking in god's ways or if you haven't heard the truth some people right now even through these videos they may be saying well I feel in the fire of the spirit, you know, I know this is the truth. If you're hearing it and you're receiving it, I'm not saying what I'm saying. I just want you to discern, but you're feeling it. You'll know if it's truth or if it's not, because right now what is being spoken, you will see a light, something that you, it draws you near. And you know, when you're, that's why a lot of people bounce from church to church. It's something when it's truth you know it's truth, and it's something that's going to ground you. It's something you want to, like, literally build your house of stone upon, a solid foundation. But when it's a, 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 a foundation of sand that you want to build your house upon, you're not stable. You just don't feel right. The waves come, and it crashes, and you're, suddenly your house is falling down. You have to repair it again. But a house built on solid rock and the stone, nothing, no weather will come against it. I, I hope you hear what I'm what is being said, but... Um, faith, when you hear it, the truth, it'll, you'll grow in faith. And faith comes from hearing. And believing is, comes from faith. So those who know the message and hears the truth of God's word, not dividing it. The Antichrist divided it from Constantine. He divided the old and new, said they're separate entities. But is, is one. The same flesh that existed from the beginning, the same word came, became flesh you know, it's it's the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. It's um, it's beautiful. So, the more you grow in faith by reading His Word, and you can't just read it like I'm going to read all this chapter, you know, or all this book really fast. Take your time, slow. People aren't going to tell you to do that because there's always these things. You know, have quick uh, devotion, daily devotions, things like that. That's not going to help you one bit. Let me quickly read this chapter before I go out the door. Um, let me do Torah portions and those things. That's that's religious. I'm not, I'm going to tell you that take the time, go where God leads you. Don't open it like it's a Ouija board and be like God is speaking to me right there. You know, don't open it like that. Like, you know, I just flipped through my book and opened it and I just landed on Matthew five and I know He's talking to me. Listen, just that's not the way. That's the way Christians they have brought in a lot of um, old time. Uh, what is that word? I can't. I can't think of the word right now. I'm drawing a blank. Um, mis- mysticism, and that's what they have brought into it. 
mysticism that I brought in, and that's why a, a lot of a lot of things. There's even a lot of things in Christianity that has a lot of New Age type mysticism, but you won't recognize it. It's just like I I, I won't go into deep detail about it. I could go on until Yeshua comes back, but I'm there. That, don't don't do that. Just complete desire His word. God, what are you trying to speak to me? What does your word mean? I want to know you. Have that that mindset. Have that, have that viewpoint, like that conscience, that desire. Like I want to know your heart. You want to know if you're dating somebody or you get married. You want to know that person's heart as much as you can. You're on fire. You're up day and night. Like you, just like when you got into a new relationship. You're like, I can't wait for their text. I can't wait for their call. I can't wait to go out to eat with them. I can't wait to go to a movie with them. I can't wait to do these things with they want to be with them all the time, right? Same thing with God. That's the same thing. Don't lose the lose the love that you had at first. That's what he warns in Revelation. So also read his word the same way because his word will is his love note to us. It's his love letter. It's his love language. In the same way we want to love or learn our, our spouse's love language, whether it's physical touch or words of affirmation or, you know, um, quality time, things like that. You want to learn your, your spouse's love language, right? You want to do what pleases them and brings them love. But as time goes on, some spouses start, I'm going to spend my time watching sports and, you know, let my body lust after these things. And the wife's like, oh, I'm going to spend my time gossiping with friends on the phone and, uh, you know, shopping. But... And now, then I'm going to spend my time in front of my TV watching my gossip shows and my reality TV shows. It's like you're not going to grow. So in the same way, you got to desire God the same way you would desire to know the one you love. And I hope that helps people because that's there's nothing religious about that. Um, and I've had some people that even wanted me to read things, read the Bible in a year. Don't do that. Don't. Just like with the Torah Porsches, they... The, that came from Judaism and it seeped its way into Messianic Judaism as well. They want you to read Torah portions where you read drashes and stuff. Um, the Old Testament to the New Testament, they have set like doctrines, right? Plans, just like a lot of Christians do with set plans to read the Bible in a year and stuff like that. It can't be done. If you do that, you're going to rush and you're not going to know God's heart. You're just doing it out of religious heart. And that's, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. But um, I hope that helps. Let me see. What in the... Hey, Shalom. Shalom, Dow Lion. And uh, let me see who else is following. Leonis. Diallo. I, I see in everybody. Papa Bear. That's a cool name. Uh, that is, yes. See, you're gonna jump church to church. You're gonna jump place to place, doctor and doctor and theology and th theology because you're being a goat separated. You don't know the shepherd's voice. When you know the shepherd's voice, you enter the narrow gate. That's why very few find it. The sheep, as I spoke in the, that's the first video. This is my this third one now. I been, think I've been doing this for almost three hours. But um, the sheep know his voice, okay? And when he calls, the sheep know the voice. The, his voice, the goats don't. Just like the, he's the good shepherd, but there's false shepherds. And the, the, as, as I said, the, the sheep that, if I were to speak, and I'm going to go over this again because there might be some new people. If I was a shepherd and you had sheep, okay, they're going to know your voice, but they're not going to know my voice. They're going to come to you, but they're not going to come to me. So that's in the same sense. Yeshua, Jesus is this good shepherd. The sheep know his voice, just as God's people know his voice. They know his word. They're going to grow in his word like a fruitful tree and produce fruit. The, the people that do not know his word, but her doctrine, theology, commentary, stuff like that. They're not going to grow in God's word because it's not truth. That's why they're going to bounce from site to site, YouTube video to YouTube video, pastor to pastor, rabbi to rabbi, church to church. They're going to be seeking anything their eyes can see, amazed by signs and wonders, still seeking, still being tossed around by the waves of the sea, as James says, never able to plant their roots firmly in the word of God and the foundation of God. They're going to be tossed by every wave of deception. 
because these people are going to continually, and this is the problem, eventually they may give up or they may get handed over to their own desires and lusts. So eventually they may find a false teacher or the teacher that's going to teach them the word, but it's not actually the word. It's a false word, and it's going to cater to their passions, their lust, their desires, something that is deep within. As again, I was going back to the Antichrist spirit. It's the heart, soul, and mind, right? That mark. So it's going to, it's going to cater after their lust, their desires, and they're going to go after those, that lifestyle, and think they're, they're going to think that's God's word. It's going to think it's, they're going to think it's sound doctrine and biblical truth. But they're not, still not going to have peace. You'll know if it's the peace of God or the peace of the world. The peace of the world can't offer you what God's word does. God's word is something that can't be, you can't have, a peace you can't have in the flesh. You have to walk in the spirit and under the, in order to understand it. You've got to have the spirit and be born again in order to have that. In the same sense, being born again, you can't just grow up overnight, right? So being born again, you have to have the milk. Then you take the milk, you grow up on meat, the meat. You know, you digest the word of God. You have to be able to digest it. Take time. Slow it down. You're not just going to be a, a grow into a baby and suddenly I'm an adult now. You know, it's just like you grow in until the day you're old. And what's, what's kind of beautiful about it, it's just like when you're old, a lot of times you can't eat meat when you get really old. So you have to have a liquid diet more. So you can't have solid food as what Paul was saying. So, in a sense, you become a child again. We shouldn't be, you should be growing closer to God in humility. And one who doesn't, that's why he says, let the little children come. For, for, ones, for ones such as these, unless you in, become like a little child, you surely won't enter the kingdom of heaven. So, in the same sense, how loving is a child? How full of doctrine and theology is a child? If you go to Africa or some of these other Asian countries and China and stuff, if you t talk to these people, it's different in the Western world. Even in, in Australia, it's different. Europe is different in America. It's When you are teaching them God's word, there's so much highlighted doctrine. It's like taking this verse right here and people highlighting it, and they already have a predisposed doctrine or th theology of what they think God's word says. So they're not able to see the truth. They think that's truth. But again, God's sheep know his voice and his sheep listen, his sheep follow. And if, you, if it's not God's word, they're going to be handed over to the false shepherds and eventually over to their own passions and lusts and eventually to judgment. So be careful. Um, stop, I'll see what else. Stop right there. Um, Diallo, what? Um, ask your question again, please. I just seen your answer. I, I didn't see your question. Please, uh, let me see. We're. I'm trying. I'm trying to get everybody here. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Why? That's a good one. Preach the gospel. Um, why do you think people don't talk much about agape love? Well, there's different types of love. Um, agape love. And there's different types even in, in Judaism of old. There's, there's a type, two types of love. Um, one love is like a fire. It burns with passion and love, right? And the other one is like water. It goes deep down and, and even reaches the crevices and nourishes the soul, right? Um, it's a, it's a something, so it's like fire and water. So it's in a sense, love is compared to, to both. Um, and a lot of people don't speak of agape love because they're not walking in it. They don't know it themselves. If, how can you know love without the spirit? <laughs> Think about it. You can't know love without the spirit. If you don't have the spirit of God, you can't love. You're, you're loving in a way that religion teaches you to love. You're, you're in the flesh. The flesh cannot submit to the ways of the spirit. And so when you know love, you're going to know God's word. God's laws are written on your hearts for he is love. He, he, you know, um, you can't love your brothers and sisters. You can't take care of them the way you know you ought to. 
and even in the, in the, in the, in the, that day, the Pharisees were also, um, it's about to end again. So what I'm going to do, if you want to come back, um, just type your questions again, if you have any questions, but I'm going to keep going on this. I'm about to get into something else. If you want to come back in, I know it might be getting late for some of you, but, uh, I'm going to keep speaking. I'll just come right back in.